Hello friends, welcome back to Chanagiri's Nursing Education Tutorials. In last session, we have learned about two important models of evidence-based practice. That is, John Hopkins Nursing Model of Evidence-Based Practice and Iowa Model of Evidence-Based Practice. In today's session, we will learn one more important model of evidence-based practice that is Stettler Model of Evidence-Based Practice. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe the channel and do not forget to like and share the video. Let us begin with today's session on Stettler Model of Evidence-Based Practice. We all are working or giving our service in any one or the other organization and will come across with many problems while dealing with the clients, colleagues, organization policies and procedures or sometimes you want to bring changes in the organizational policies or programs or procedures what you are doing routinely. In such condition, this Stettler model will help us to bring the changes. So, the Stettler model examines how to use evidence to create formal change within organizations or policies or procedures as well as how individual practitioners can use research on an informal basis as part of critical thinking and reflective practice. So let us learn in detail about this model of evidence-based practice. This Stettler model of EBP consists of five phases. Each phase is designed to facilitate critical thinking about the practical application of research findings, result in the use of evidence in the context of daily practice, to mitigate some of the human errors made in decision making. So next is the phases of the Stettler model. Those are the first phase is preparation, second one is validation, third one is comparative evaluation and decision making, fourth one is translation or application, fifth one is evaluation. In the first phase, you need to define the purposes and outcomes for the issues or catalyst. Means before finding the evidence, you need to define what is the main purposes of your issues and what will you expect when you are going to apply it. For example, suppose you want to do a procedure of back care for bedridden patient. Then you need to list the main purposes of back care, those may be to assess the condition of the skin, to check the skin turgidity, to facilitate maximum blood circulation, to enhance the comfortability of the patient, to prevent bed sore, to enhance the nerve conductivity, etc. After listing out the purposes, then what you will expect that may be patient should not develop bed sore. After listing out your expectations, then affirm the priority means what extent the procedure is necessary. After fixing priorities, then you need to consider the influential factors. Those may be your profession, higher authority, validation of the procedure, etc. After that, you need to go for searching the research evidences, whether that procedure, that is, the procedure what you are going to apply on patient has sufficient evidences or not. If enough evidences are available, then you proceed to next step, that is, phase 2, validation. In this phase, you need to critic on the evidences what you have found out. If evidences are really authentic, then you go for next step, otherwise you reject it. If you are going to accept the research findings, then synthesize the findings and outcome criteria. After synthesizing the outcome criteria, then you can proceed to next step that is comparative evaluation and decision making. This is a crucial step in this model. 
and you need to take a decision of applying or modifying a procedure based on following that is whether the evidence can able to make modification in procedure and it fit for setting or not does your modifications what you are going to make in the procedure are feasible to the organization as well as to the patient and family whether the modification may affect the current practices or not whether your modification may bring considerable changes in cost of the procedure in terms of man money and material after analyzing above all factors you need to take firm decision on implementation of procedure or modification in the current procedure if modification may not bring the changes then stop the application and if it brings the changes then go ahead for application of procedure on patient in step 4 that is translation and application you need to confirm the type label and method as per the details given in step 2 This model says that you can practice the changes what you want to bring into the procedure informally and formally if you want to practice it in formal base then you need to identify the problems design the procedure prepare the evidence based documents and disseminate the results of procedure and develop the evidence based changes plan including evaluation here one thing we can notice that whatever you are going to practice informally that does not develop the proof for practice for others and that may be limited to you and if you go for formal practice it will help for entire community as it develop the documents as well as procedure methods after practicing formally then you go for fifth step that is evaluation here in this step you need to evaluate the whole process as you set the goals in first step of this model in this step you need to check goal related progress as well as end results and outcomes of procedures or modifications made in current practices if you practice informally then you need to evaluate the outcomes as per routine practice friends this is about statler model of evidence based practice and i hope you all have understood the whole model in next session we will discuss one more interesting topic of research that is identification of research problem and formulation of problem statement till that time take care and thank you for watching and listening my lecture thank you